Hey Internet, this is Gunter with Mini Mishaps and we are back for the second half of the second round of the paint something quick, figure something out, do something with all this pile of shame tournament we've been having with the miniatures here. All right, if you're just joining us, I basically took my pile of shame, which is all of the miniatures that are partially painted, unpainted, primed, or 3D printed, and I put them all in a pit up against each other tournament because I couldn't decide what I wanted to paint. And uh, <laughs> so we are on our fourth video in this series, and we'll have semi-finalists after today. And the, uh, the fun thing that we're going to try and do is we're going to take all the semifinalists and we're just going to have a big batch uh, painting on a live stream and that'll be close to the middle of May, if you can watch for that. And uh, we're going to jump right in and uh, the rule for our second round, this is the second half of the second round, our rule for, the, we'll put the first half of the second round here. Rule for the second round is going to be how recognizable they are in the circles of nerd and the world at large, and the more uh, recognizable creature will move forward. So, first up, we've got a dragon versus a question mark sci-fi alien demon dog holding some sort of gem, which going to go on out of limb and guess that more people have heard of Dragon than uh, the other thing that I described <laughs> with a lot of extra words there. Uh, Dragon moves forward and Weird Space Dog gets to, uh, gets to hang out until a different time. Next up, we've got Dwarf and a person with a chainsaw for a hand. So I think the sculpt on the chainsaw person is really cool. I love this dwarf too, but I'm going to guess that there are more folks in the miniature painting circles that, uh, that have heard of a dwarf. So dwarf gets to move on. We've got a uh, lizard folk versus a bard playing an instrument. And we're going to have the lizard folk move forward on a technicality here because I think most folks that have played Dungeons and Dragons have heard of a lizard folk, while the actual word bard is not uh, overtly used very much. Um, so, plus you have other anthropomorphic lizards in cartoons and media and things, so we'll have the lizard guy move forward. Maybe he'll maybe he'll finally be redeemed for the he was the the one that was a failed experiment at trying to dye a piece of plastic with salt. So um, if you want to see that video, I'll put it up here. Next up, we've got a druid casting something, probably in Tangle. And then we have an orc warrior, and uh, I'm gonna let have the orc warrior be um, more recognizable because outside of specifically D&D, lots of franchises and video games and, and movies and things have orcs. So we're gonna have the orc uh, warrior rest, warrior rest, lady warrior orc <laughs> move forward. All right, uh, we have got a sort of um, tie here, or a versus here between the paladin, recognizable to our definitely our role-playing fantasy players, and then you have this um, person holding the two chains, and this is from Magic the Gathering. So now we have a question of which has a bigger following, and that I don't know. I would like to hear from you guys in the comments what you think, but I'm going to guess that the Magic the Gathering brand is... Boy, that's really tough. Um, Magic the Gathering has a brand all to its own. We're going to have that one move forward as a recognizable brand, whereas Paladin could go to any 
any fantasy franchise. Um, not sure if I've got that right, but we'll, we'll have to give them a tie, and, and the tiebreaker will be the, the fun to paintness of the ropes or chains or whatever those are that he's got. She's got. All right, anthropomorphic bear with an axe, and versus the training equipment. Um, I think we're going to give another technicality and give it to the bear, just so that we have a all character paint uh, event, yeah, and we can do some other event for terrain or terrain pieces. So we'll have our bear, X bear, X bear. Seems like there's like a deodorant commercial in there or something. Moving on. All right. So <laughs> we're going to go in a different direction and move to a literal sense. On one hand here on the right, you can literally tell this is a person, an adventurer, or a dwarf. Uh, even though it doesn't have the iconic dwarven beard that you might think of, still definitely a person there with a box. Whereas... No matter what the light is on this other thing, you, it is very hard to tell that this is uh, a headless ghost coming out of a gravestone. It, it really, if you didn't know that beforehand, it's hard to, hard to recognize that. So we're going to have the dwarf here move forward. Now I've got two dwarfs, so this is a hard recognizability. Um, but I think we're going to go with the tiny dwarf on the right. Um, just because carrying, so that on the front side there, it's got an axe and it's carrying like a, a barrel of, could be uh, ale, it could be gunpowder, it could be, you know, mithril dust, who knows. Um, but it meets a lot of the kind of iconic dwarven recognizability there. The other, on the other hand, has got dual wield sword and mace, which in the first round had the, was the winning component here because that's very high on the rule of cool but it's not very recognizable not very iconic not very uh, you know what you expect when you have a, a fantasy dwarven character so we're gonna have the super tiny dwarf on the right there move forward all right we have got strange Chibi, alien, skeleton, horn creature on the left. Um, pretty unique, not not very pervasive in the recognizability spectrum. And then we've got a mimic, and most anyone in an RPG <laughs> setting would know or have heard of a mimic. There's all kinds of memes and things about them. So mimic gets to move forward in this case. All right, so you guys get had a hand in this next. Oh my gosh, that was. I guess we'll never know if that was on purpose. It's, it was. It wasn't right away on purpose, and then became on purpose by the time it was done being out of my mouth. I think uh, looking on the screen, and seeing that it was a hand. But you guys had a hand in this particular one because um, while a different fandom would know, obviously Spock and um, and his iconic gesture there. We're moving outward from fantasy, hobbyist, miniature, role-playing um, circles that, so we're just going to be going from inside the, in my case, D&D &D realm, um, to have a manticore recognizable as a fantasy monster. Um, more so than the sci-fi um, gesture of the Star Trek um, Force Be With You. May the Force. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll have the Manicor move forward in the tournament and I'll do something for... Um, oh, oh my gosh. No. Sorry, all, bo all of both fandoms. May the Force is coming up. May the Force. And that's Star Wars, not Star Trek. Spock on the original Star Trek, and every Vulcan since uh, has the hand thing. So the hand thing was supposed to be for the Star Trek Day, Trekkie Day, back in March. So 
I do have that straight. I just don't have a good memory. So. All right, Manticore moves forward, and <laughs> maybe we'll just uh, have a um, inside joke with you, the channel viewers, and do the the wrong uh, sci-fi <laughs> May the Fourth. Get it all completely wrong, and let the let the internet uh, tell us what's what. Um, so if you see that happen, it's totally on purpose, and <laughs> this video is proof that I meant to do that and troll both of those groups of nerds um, <laughs> because I'm in both of those groups and I and I completely almost missed it on the video. That was a lot of uh, me talking about that, and you didn't need all of that probably. And to go moves on. All right. Uh, similar thing here, we're going to go again probably with the angel over the kids throwing snowballs because it is <laughs> more likely to see a uh, uh, diva or a celestial or, or you know, angelic being in a fantasy setting than a group of contemporary kids wearing contemporary clothes throwing contemporary snowballs. Angel moves forward even though he doesn't have a foot to stand on. It's a strange day. Alright, we've got a double elimination round. Spongebob 3D printed versus Shrek 3D printed. Both recognizable. Neither one's in our, in our high fantasy fandom. But also my four year old and I had a paint day and we, I had him pick one of these pairings and he painted the Spongebob and I painted the Shrek. So these two are disqualified. They can no longer be in the tournament because they both have already been painted. But if you want to see the Shrek get painted up, there's a video for it. Beware uh, terrible accents in that video. FYI. Alright, that's your little that's your little secret reward for watching this far in the video. Next up we have got Minion Bob and since the quality on this 3D print is not the best, it's not really recognizable as anything, even though it is a hyper-specific NPC for my homebrew campaign named Cutter Fungathorn. Very cool character that I hope to someday paint. Not as recognizable as the minions. So, Minion Bomb, moving right along. Alright, we have got an upside down Angry Birds Star Wars. So again, a little bit different fan base than the uh, design of the channel. And then we have a pirate, which is recognizable, musician, which is recognizable, anthropomorphic frog, which may or not be more recognizable, but very definitely fantasy setting fits more recognizably than the Star Wars Angry Birds. So, um, if you're a big fan of Star Wars Angry Birds, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, the Frog Bard Pirate mashup character is going to move on into the semifinals. And last but not least, we have um, a, another pairing where one is obviously a huge group of people know about Spongebob and Spongebob characters. This is Patrick Star. And the other miniature has actually already been painted, but that's okay. He probably wouldn't have made it in the tournament here because it's another kind of niched merchant for the, for the homebrew fantasy setting that I'm running. So not super recognizable by itself, except for the, uh, the poofy pantaloons and the floppy hat. Uh, we're going to go with Patrick Star being more recognizable. In no particular order, we have got the dragon. There's our dwarf. You can see the, the frog <laughs> pirate bard in the back. Lizard folk. The barbarian orc. Magic the Gathering whips. Uh, Smokey the bear. And the beardless dwarf. The tiny dwarf. Patrick Star, you can see there behind the Mimic and the Manticore. Uh, we've got the Angel that can't stand up. 
and we have Minnie and Bob. So there are our second half of the semifinalists, and you can watch for that live stream in the middle of May. Thank you for joining, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for supporting us, all of our Patreon supporters. We uh, really appreciate that. And um, you can find all of those links in the uh, description. So we'll see you guys next time for the end of the Pile of Shame Painting Tournament. Thanks, Internet.